Between my last video and this one, my YouTube channel has quintupled in subscriber count and increased its viewership by a factor of 30. And to that, thank you everybody! Anyway, P-Brain has returned and made a sequel to his god-awful rotation video I debunked a few weeks back. Let's tear this nonsense to shreds. And this is what happens to water. People happen to be filming these swimming pools. See this? The ground's not moving anywhere, but the water is. Of course, P-Brain still doesn't understand how rotation works, so he thinks the rotation of Earth in the same constant speed and general direction is somehow comparable to the violent shaking of tectonic plates during an earthquake. And these poles are flattening many miles deep, and the equator is bulging upward 14 miles. That seems large at first, sure, but we need to put it into perspective. The Earth's equatorial diameter is 7,926 miles. The polar diameter is 7,899 miles. The equator is bulged by Earth's rotation enough to make it 0.3% wider than the poles. That's rather minuscule. So that ground wants to go straight, which is essentially lifting off like an airplane. That's what it wants to do. That means that any pockets that open up on the Earth would immediately be filled with the ground shifting in to fill it up as it heads for the equator. That would create massive earthquakes like the likes we've never seen non-stop all over the Earth. No, it wouldn't, P-Brain, because gravity is counteracting it at all latitudes. I've made some diagrams to help visualize my point. As we can see here, at the equator, gravity is completely running counter to the centrifugal force. At the poles, it's perpendicular to the centrifugal force, but that doesn't matter since there won't be any centrifugal force to address at those locations. Between the equator and the poles, the direction is diagonal, which is, simply put, a combination of horizontal and vertical. No matter what latitude you're at, gravity will always be directly countering the direction of the centrifugal force, which stops caves from opening and closing by themselves, and stops the water from rushing into the equator to forge caves in that manner. Oh, Keyboard, you can have a glass of water in this car, and it can look totally still, or in this airplane. Yeah, but you're not rotating, and you're not moving to the extent that would flatten the airplane and bulge its sides out due to the rotational speed or the movement of the airplane. Now, does it? No, but that's a false analogy. An airplane in a tailspin doesn't have built-in mechanisms that can pull objects toward their centers of mass and are 300 times stronger than the centrifugal forces you described. Earth does. It's called gravity. When you have still water like this, that means we're not moving. Wrong. It actually means we are not accelerating. That is a very simple, yet massive distinction that needs to be made, yet you somehow still don't understand that after almost a decade. Sheesh. There's nothing to make it rotate around the poles and to stay put and calm as we see here. Let's read this again together, shall we? An object at rest remains at rest, and an object in motion remains in motion at constant speed in a straight line UNLESS ACTED UPON BY AN UNBALANCED FORCE. You know, gravity, which is always counteracting the centrifugal force and is over 300 times stronger than it at the equator. It will go in a straight line. It's only tethered to the center of the ball, and therefore it's free to move all over the ball. Gravity tethered it to the pole, then sure, water could rotate around the pole. But gravity's not located at the pole. Gravity's located at the center of their fictitious imaginary ball. And if that were the case, water is free to move all over the ball and would slide down to the equator. End of story. No, it's not the end of the story, P-Brain, because gravity actually is tethering things to the poles. Anything affected by gravity will try to move to the target object's center of mass. Since the Earth is bulged at the equator, the closest points to Earth's core are the poles. So yes, the water is tethered to the poles with a force that is directly countering the centrifugal force at all latitudes. Not to mention, water doesn't like to pile up. It likes to spread around. Try this yourself the next time you use a faucet. Does the water try to form a massive mound raised over the drain? No, it spreads out, just like it would and does do on Earth. Thus, the water will spread across the entirety of the planet and settle, rather than pooling up at the equator or the poles. We live on a flat, immovable Earth. For the second time, P-Brain, no. We actually live on a spinning, round globe. Please do your best to learn about high school physics so that we don't have to deal with a trilogy of head-spinning stupidity. And with that, this video is over. Thanks for watching.